give us a greater glimpse of the never changing God. And all we want and all we need is found in you, is found in you, in Jesus every victory. God bless you. Just want to welcome all of you here with us today, and we want to just say to those of you that are visiting with us today, we want to welcome you, and we just want you to know today that you are our honored guest one time, because after one time, we just adopt you as family. You're just right on in with us, all right? Also, we want to welcome all of you that are with us today on Facebook. And as always, we just want to uh, welcome you to come right along with us. Even though we're distanced by space, we're not distanced by spirit. And the Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So I want you to take your liberty today and just allow God to do what he wants to do in your life today. Amen? I uh, just want to remind you of a couple of announcements that we have immediately following our service today. Uh, we're going to be transitioning from uh, this location uh, down to the boat ramp here in Bishop Park. And uh, we're going to have a baptismal. So how many of you are going to be baptized today? I know we've got several. Praise God. All right. Amen. That looks good. So uh, we're excited about that. And uh, uh, just it'll take a few minutes. I've got to change and stuff, but we'll make that transition. There's plenty of parking there at the boat ramp. And so uh, some people have asked about that. So you can just transition from here 
uh, down uh, to there. Also, I uh, just want to announce to our armor bearers that we'll be having an armor bearer uh, board meeting on October the 5th. Uh, that's on a Tuesday, and it will be at 7 o'clock. So I want to, uh, all you armor bearers to mark that on your calendar and be there if you can, please. All right? Is that all we got, guys? Okay. Just want to remind those of you that are with us on Facebook because we've had several inquiries about it. Uh, there's a couple ways that you can do uh, your worship and giving. Uh, you can uh, mail it at P.O. Box 302, Radford, Virginia. The zip code is 24141. Or you can go to our website at freedomfellowshipradford.org. Go to the donate button and do it that way. Here in the sanctuary, I'm going to ask our ushers to come at this time. And we're going to take an opportunity today to worship uh, the Lord with our tithe and offering. And as we've always said, and we don't just say it to fill up time, we are so thankful uh, that you're faithful. And God has always been faithful to us. Can I get a witness? Amen. And now it's our turn, our turn and our time to turn that thankfulness back to him and offer up to him the tithe and the offering. Father, we just want to thank you today for this opportunity to come together. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. And as the psalmist David declared, what shall I render unto the Lord for the things that he has done for me? And Father, we're just so thankful today for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do, God. And we just praise you for that. And we just ask God today as we worship you with our tithe and offering, God, we pray that you would bless each and every one as they give. And God, I pray that it will be returned back to them fourfold. And God, I pray that you will take this offering today. I pray that you will touch it, bless it, anoint it, God, and help us, God, in everything that we do. God, let us, let us do it with integrity, and let us do it, God, with a spirit of excellence, that we might always, in everything we do, bring honor and glory to your name. And we ask it all in Christ's name. And everybody said amen and amen. God bless you today as you give. We've also had a couple people ask, we are going to be uh, doing our baptismal service online as well. So uh, um, we're glad to be able to bring that to people that can't uh, be here or be down there for that. So uh, uh, we will be doing that on Facebook Live as well. One of the things we love to do around here as a church family is we like to celebrate family occasions. We're going to be doing that in just a moment, uh, we're doing uh, baby dedications after we get done with the worship before the message comes forth. And another uh, thing that we love to do is celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. So has anybody had a birthday this past week? Anybody that's willing to admit it before we make it worse on you the next week around? All right, nobody? Just make sure you're telling the truth because we will find out and there will be pictures shown, all right? All right, anybody have an anniversary this past week? Any anniversaries that you want to celebrate? <laughs> all right, everybody was taking it easy this time of the year, I guess. All right, let's all stand together if you would. And let's worship the Lord together. Oh, Children's Church, I'm sorry. I knew I was forgetting something. Children's church will be dismissed. All right. They say the mind is the first to go, and mine's been gone a long time. All right, let's worship the Lord together. I saw Sweden fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name 
is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Still a miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. Oh, my praise belongs to you forever. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace we wrote my story. I'll testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm testifying. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Together, sons and daughters, born with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Oh yes, our God will finish what He started. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace we wrote my story, I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'll testify This is my testimony, this is my testimony Oh I'm alive If I'm not dead and you're not done Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe If I'm not dead and you're not done Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe If I'm not dead and you're not done Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe I'm not dead and you're not dead. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. For Jesus Christ the righteous, I'll testify This is my testimony, this is my testimony Oh, I'm alive This is my testimony Oh, I'm alive Space between where I used to be and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding? Of how you've set me free There is a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me There is another in the fire All my dead left for dead beneath the water
There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come on, lay in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. There'll be another in the fire. Standing next to me. There'll be another in the water. Holding back the sea. And should I ever need reminding? How good you've been to me. I'll count the joy from every battle. Throughout my history Your faithfulness has walked beside me The winter storms made way for spring In every season From where I'm standing I see Sunny goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see promises and fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Help me remember when I'm weak. Fear may come, but fear will leave. You lead my heart to victory. You are my strength, and you always will be. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my all over my life I see your promises and fulfillment All over my life All over my life I see the cross, the empty grave The evidence is endless All my sins are rolled away because of you, oh Jesus, see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sins go away. Because of you, oh Jesus, oh. Fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises and fulfillment. All over my life, all over my life. So why should I fear? Who I should I fear? The evidence is here. Who I should. about 
about that this morning? The Why should you fear? Why should you be afraid? So I should oh, yes. I fear? Why should I fear? Hallelujah. The yes, it is. It's all around you. It's all around you. It's over so you. Hallelujah. It's in front of you and behind you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, it's here. Yes, it is. And it's clear. Hallelujah. Why? Why should I feel? My God. The evidence is here. Why should I Come on, sing that over your life today. The evidence God is singing that over you. You sing it over yourself. Hallelujah. Why, Why? should oh, I yes. fear? My God. Oh, the evidence It's so clear. Is yes, it is. It's clear. Why should I fear? Your evidence is right here today. The evidence is here. Why should I fear? Oh, we cast that fear out oh, right the now. We cast that spirit of fear out of your life right now. Those of you that are with us today on Facebook, we cast that spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and of a sound mind, saith the word of God. Hallelujah. You don't have to fear no more. You don't have to be controlled by your fears. You don't have to be intimidated by your fears. You don't have to feel pressed down because of your fears. Because God has extinguished your fear today. And where there is faith, fear cannot exist. Hallelujah. And the faith that God has given you is greater than that of a mustard seed. And Jesus said, if you would say unto this mountain, if you only had faith of that as a mustard seed, you could say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast in the sea, and it shall obey you. I don't know what your mountain is today. I don't know what mountain you may be facing in your life today. But I want to tell you right here, right now, the evidence is clear. The evidence is here. Amen. You don't have to fear anyone. Let's sing it one more time. Just sing it one more. Should I fear for oh, the evidence is here so why should I fear for oh, the evidence is here why should I fear all oh, the evidence is here? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. God bless you. My, my, I feel the presence of God in this place today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You know, one of the things that I love to do as a pastor, uh, there's a lot of different facets that goes into pastoral ministry, and, and I've been doing it now for longer than I can remember, 30-some-odd <laughs> uh, years. And um, one of the things I really do enjoy doing, and I'm going to be doing today, um, when uh, we uh, scheduled for Todd to speak, I thought, man, that's going to be a great day for me. All I get to do is concentrate on the two things I love doing as a pastor, and that's doing baby dedications and baptisms, because both of those talk about new life, new life with children and new life in the spirit realm of, of being born again and following Christ in obedience through um, uh, the act of baptism. And uh, the kids are already excited about it. Amen. <laughs> so at this time, I'm going to ask uh, 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 Princeton and, and little uh, Stryker and, uh, huh? 
Riker. <laughs> hey, y'all be old one these days too. Princeton, Riker, and Beckett to come up and their families. Jeez, old flip. We got parents, grandparents, aunts, come on up. Auntie, come on up. Back home, we call them aunts. Y'all call them aunts. We call them aunts and uncles. Yeah, just, just, just yeah, just the family spread across. If I can have the th three children right here in front of me, watch this, this right here. It's, it's, uh, All right. Honey, if you'll come and help me. She's like, I wish I could help you. <laughs> she told me, she said, make sure you look down when you're saying their names. And I'm like, I don't need to look down. I guess I do. One of these days I'll learn to listen to the voice of God. And some of you know what I'm talking about. I, I, was, I was actually thinking about this this morning and how close in age these three young men are. And I thought, you know, if the Lord tarries, if the Lord tarries, what would be the possibility of these three young men being the next generation of preachers and prophets? that rise up. Amen? And, and as I thought about that, man, I thought, you know, that would be something uh, to see that. And I, I, I thought, Lord, if you don't come before then, I'd love to live long enough just to see that. Amen? To watch them taking their turns free. See, they've got the voices for it. they got the lungs. Amen? Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, we never know when we dedicate our children to the Lord, a lot of times people think it's just something you do. No, it's not just something you do. It's, it's a very solemn obligation that we partake in as parents and even grandparents and extended family uh, to raise these children up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. And we never know what our guidance, even at this early of age, what our guidance will lead them to. My mom would literally, back then you could do it and not go to jail for it, but my mom would smack me upside the head when I told her I'm not going to church. And I would go to church with her handprint on the side of my face. And then if I didn't pay attention, I would get, I would get, I would get that backhand uh, there. But look where I'm at. Look where I'm at because of it. Amen. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 5 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb of your mother, I sanctified. And that word sanctified means to be set apart. I sanctified thee. So before we're ever born, God sets us apart. And then we read in the book of Mark, chapter 10, why we do what we're doing right here today. It says, they brought young children unto him, speaking of Jesus, that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for if such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms and put his hands upon them, and he blessed them. And then we read over in the book of Deuteronomy, words that were given to the Israelites and is, and is to be taught to every generation until Jesus comes. And it says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 and 7, These words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest, sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, 
and when thou liest down, and when you rise up. So we know that we are to teach our children from the very youngest of ages. And we get that example even from Christ himself. Not only did he bless children in his earthly ministry, but we read in Luke chapter 2 that he himself was dedicated. The Bible tells us of the account of Christ that when eight days were accomplished, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the dedication of a child does not impart salvation to the infant, but rather it is an acknowledgement by the parents that the child is a gift from God and that they want to recommit that baby back to Him. Such a dedication is biblical, for we have read this morning that Christ was dedicated while He was an infant, and during His ministry on this earth, children were brought to Him for His blessing. And let me just restate without any wavering this morning that the family is still and always will be a divine institution created by our Heavenly Father, and children are gifts of God to parents for care, protection, and training. And parents have a solemn obligation, both to God and to their children, to nurture and to train their children in the things of God. We never, at any age, lose our responsibility as a parent, and our children, at no age, lose their responsibility for us to be their parents. And we need to always understand that. So for as much as these children today are being presented by you for Christian dedication, it is your duty to provide a Christian home and a godly environment for them and to see that they are taught early the principles of the holy faith, that they shall be trained to give reverent attendance both to public and private worship of God and the teaching of the Holy Scriptures, and that in every way, by precept and by example, you shall lead them into the love of God and to the service of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I ask all of you now, as parents, grandparents, and extended family, in the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses, do you solemnly promise to bring up these children in the fear of the Lord? If so, say we do. Do you promise to endeavor to lead them early to accept Christ as their personal Savior and Lord? If so, say we do. Do you rededicate your home to the Lord as a place of Christian environment in which the spiritual, spiritual nature of your child may grow and mature? If so, say we do. And now I say to this local body of believers, do you as members of the church receive these children in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and do you promise to be father, mother, brother, sister, and friend to them? If so, say, in the name of Jesus Christ, we do. Amen and amen. I'm going to ask our uh, armor bearers to come. <clears throat> also, our ministers, if you would come and kind of just gather uh, behind the family. And if you'll bring these three boys up here. <laughs> Normally he cries around me. Now he's laughing at me. Now I know what it takes to get him to laugh at me. I ain't going by the book. I'm going by the heart. Come in here. Let's get these three guys together. And I want, I want our armor bearers, you ministers, if you would lay your hands on these dads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray over these children right now. And God, we dedicate them to you and to your holy service. And God, we pray that with each and each one of these young men today, as they have come, their parents have presented them for baptism. God, I pray that you would place your hand upon their lives. Lord, your word says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And God, I pray that you would order their steps. I pray that you would set a hedge of protection around them from every evil force 
uh, uh, of this world. And God, I pray that you will protect them with a covering of your grace, your mercy, and your anointing. And God, I pray that when the day comes, God, that their decisions would be made toward heaven, that the anointing of God would be upon them, and that you would use them, God, for your joy and your pleasure. And God, I pray that you would bless each family. I pray, God, that you would touch these families, and may the covering of God be upon them. May the favor of God be upon their homes, their parents, their grandparents, and their extended families. God, may your glory rest upon them. God, may your favor be with them in every state that they take God in every step that they take may they may they possess everywhere the soles of their feet may go and everything that they extend their hand to God may it prosper according to your word and father we dedicate them now in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost in Jesus name everybody say amen and amen and amen God bless you hallelujah yeah, give them to the mommies. I got one over here for, yeah. There you go, mama. God, give me a hug here, buddy. Lord, give me a hug. Oh, my goodness. My goodness, boy. Hey, Amen. Can you, can you give these families a big hand clap of appreciation? Hey, Amen. Isn't this great? We, we may have just witnessed the dedicating of the next generations of preachers and prophets. Hallelujah. Man, I, I mean, that, that just got on me so strong this morning as I was getting prepared and getting ready for church of what God is, is doing right now in, in our church here at Freedom Fellowship, the spirit of revival that's uh, been ushered. And I'm going to take just a moment Todd is going to come in just a minute and he's going to present a message that I believe is absolutely going to bless your heart and touch your life today. And I know that he's prayed about it and studied and prayed and studied and prayed and studied some more. But I want to share with you, a man called me. I had a conversation with him. He's a minister. And he, and he called me and he told me he actually was preaching and had a vision while he was preaching. And Irby, God spoke to us on that mountain. And you came off that mountain and, de and declared out of your mouth what the Bible says that in the last days, saith God, I will pour my spirit out upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall have dreams and your young men shall see visions. And this preacher, though he's 74 years old, called me and said, I had a vision while I was preaching. And I said, well, tell me about it. He said, well, I was preaching and I was walking away from the pulpit and God gave me a vision and I found myself almost like it was a, a, a out-of-body experience. He said, I, I saw myself at the New River Bridge. And he said, as I looked out over the bridge, Jeff, he said, I saw people in rafts and in little boats and people in the water and 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 there were people all around. And then he said, I, I started to turn back and go back to the pulpit. And he said, a lot of times when I feel this, I, 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 you know, I feel like maybe God's getting ready to give uh, me a message in tongues. And he said, but that didn't happen. He said, I, I caught another vision. And he said it was of a field. And people were literally shoulder to shoulder in that field. Well, as he's talking to me, the Spirit of God began to... Uh, began to come on me and I said brother I know what that vision is I, I, God's given me an interpretation of that vision now hear this church the vision is the river represents the river of God that's flowing and where does new river flow right by us amen and the, and the, and the field of people represents the harvest I said brother here's what's getting ready to happen the river of God is getting ready to flow and the harvest of God is getting ready to come in. Amen. How many of you believe that today? Hallelujah. 
And, and here in a little while, I don't know how many will end up baptizing, but it's going to be quite a few. Amen. And see, God is up to something. I'm so thankful for what God is doing. And I believe that as this thing begins to, to, to accelerate, we're going to see, and I've seen this happen before. Me and Michelle have seen this happen. That even children will be, begin to speak and prophesy the things of God. Amen. We had an eight-year-old boy back home that went to his, his elementary school and began to prophesy over kids and teachers. And he was prophesying over a teacher. And at school, yes, yeah, Joe, still in America, a, a teacher fell to her knees and gave her heart to God. An eight-year-old boy. God is up to something. Amen. And Todd has something to share with us today, so get ready for it, all right? Come on, Todd. Amen. Give Todd a hand as he comes. Oops. I've got a couple things i got to get together here real quick. Now, as you know, I normally don't dress like this. The pastor told me since I'm in training, he said, any time that you're going to preach more than an hour straight, you got to wear a suit and tie, so that's why I got it on today. So I hope, I hope that you guys are okay. Now, Sheila, these aren't your good tales. I've got something I'm going to show you today. All right. All right, that's an awful loud, David. Really loud. Really loud. All right. We'll see if we can do that. A little bit for sure. All right. Maybe a little bit more. I don't know what I'm doing. I told you this is my only third time doing this. I'm in a suit, I'm sweating, and I'm going to be up here for an hour, so I've got to get comfortable. It's a suit, yeah. The darn tie squeezing my, my neck and veins popping out. Anyways, all right. So a couple weeks ago, my doctor shared with me a sermon idea that she saw at a youth rally a couple weeks ago. And after she told me about it that day, I've not been able to get it out of my mind. So today, as we say here, her steak is now your hamburger, so I hope that you're hungry. Now, has anyone here ever been to Las Vegas? I got one in the back. Anybody else? What is the saying that they say about Las Vegas? Does anybody know? That's exactly. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Now, what does that mean to you? To me, it means that we are willing to do something we normally would not do now, that can either be good or bad, but normally it's something that we would not do back home in front of people that we know. Have you ever heard anyone say, that person is not the same person behind closed doors that you know? Folks, we are all different behind closed doors. And what we show the world is normally not who we really are. Now, I could put a smile on my face and say all the right things and convince you that everything is fine, but inside, I could be falling apart and I could be broken. Now, it's easy to fool people, but it is not easy to fool God. We cannot fool God. God knows what we look like on the outside, but he also knows our heart. He knows our hurts, our pains, and our struggles. Today, I stand in front of you dressed in a coat and tie with dress pants and dress shoes. And this is my outward appearance. This is what I want you guys to see. But you cannot see my heart or what I'm struggling with. You really have no clue if I'm okay or not. And all you can base your opinion on is my outward appearance or something that I may have said and done. I'm only willing to show you what I want you to see. But we know God can see much more. Oh, hold on. I got all this stuff. I was in here late, and I forgot my stuff. Just bear with me. I think it's in here in the office.
That's better. <laughs> now, look at me. Same I told you yesterday I'd had a black shirt and pants on. I told you, I didn't lie. Now, look at me. A couple minutes ago, I, pre I presented myself to you in one way. And now when you look at me right now, I look much different. Now, I wanted to use this illustration to show you the vast contrast between the way God looks at us compared to the way the world sees us. You see, the world, take that down just a little bit more. <clears throat> Sorry. The world is going to judge us based on our appearance, our financial status, our occupation, who we hang out with. It's going to judge us based on the color of our skin. And often it's going to make us feel less than. It's going to highlight our failures and our shortcomings. And sometimes it may even celebrate our success. And I hate to say this, so often the church does the same thing. When I say church, I'm talking about the religious world. You know the folks. They remind us of our past mistakes, and they make us feel less than. They will say, because of your past, you cannot be part of the band. Work with the children or be involved in the ministry. They say I, they love us, but they don't show it. And they judge us because we do not look like them, worship like them, or talk like them. And here's my favorite. You see, you see one of these folks out in town, and they act like they don't see you or know you because you do not go to their church, and you do not believe the way that they do? Folks, that is religion. And this is why so many non-believers and believers are turned off by church today. But that is not the case here at Freedom Fellowship. Your past does not matter to us. We are not concerned by your appearance. We don't care if you went out and partied last night or you smoked your last cigarette before you walked through that door right back there. We're not worried if you're single, married, or divorced. And we could care less whether you're black, white, or brown. I want you to know, I, and, and we don't care if you served time in prison, or you served in the mission field. And I want you to know this. God does not love the preacher any more than he loves the drug addict. The job of the, job of the church is to love people as, as Christ loved us and to share the gospel with others. And before you comment online and think to yourself, that church is one of those churches where anything goes and they're not preaching the gospel. That is far from the case. And I will tell you, it is much easier to win those to Christ by accepting people, who, by accepting people for who they are and where they are rather than giving them a dogmatic set of rules trying, and trying to win them to Christ by beating them into submission. So for you on Facebook, you guys watching online, if you had a bad experience with church, then I'm going to challenge you today just once to come here in person, and I guarantee you will have a church experience like no other. We will welcome you like family, and no, we are not going to judge you. Now, we talked about how the world looks at us, and unfortunately, how the religious world looks at us, but how does God look at us? See, God sees us much differently. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, the Bible says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the thing that people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So the title of today's message, that was just the warm-up. It's not what it looks like. A couple weeks ago, if you remember, I talked about 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I, I was able to preach that. And in that chapter, King Jehoshaphat called up the people of the land to pray for protection from a mighty army that was going to invo uh, invade their land. And a spirit of the Lord come upon a man standing there in the crowd, and he said, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by this mighty army. 
for the battle is not yours, but it is God's. Now, all of us today, all of us sitting here today might have been through some type of battle. And I would say you might have left that battle beat up or even broken inside. And all of us here today have experienced the pain and anguish of a broken heart. So where do we turn in times of overwhelming sadness? Now, it's a comfort to me to realize that God knows and understands what we are going through. In Psalms 34, it chronicles a difficult time in the life of David. In, In Psalms 34, David pretended he was going insane before a foreign leader to get himself out to get himself out of a difficult and compromising situation. Now one could say that he was giving false witness in front of men, just like I showed you a couple minutes ago with my clothing. Now when our hearts are broken, we may feel like God is distant from us. But God, but David discovered that these are the times when God is closest to us. In Psalms 34 verse 18 the Bible says He might be on a, he said, it says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Now the word brokenhearted conveys the idea to either break or to shatter into millions of pieces. Now what comes to your mind when you think about brokenness? We often view brokenness as a derogatory term. The reality is brokenness is our true condition before a holy God. Now, if you doubt your brokenness, just think about how frequently we fall short of God's standard. Brokenness isn't something that we need to deny or seek after. It's part of who we are. Think about this. God uses broken people, and we've seen it time and time throughout the Bible. Noah was a drunk. Jacob was a liar. Moses had a stuttering problem. Gideon was afraid. Samson was a womanizer, Rahab was a prostitute, David had an affair, Elijah was suicidal, Isaiah preached naked, Peter denied Christ, the Samaritan woman was divorced, and Lazarus was dead. He could also use broken things as well. It takes broken soil to produce a crop, broken clouds to produce rain, broken grain to give bread, and broken bread to give strength, and it takes a broken alabaster box to give forth perfume. So remember this, broken things can become blessed things if we are willing to let God do the mending. Broken things can become blessed things if we are willing to let God do the mending. In Psalms 51, uh, verse 17, The Bible says, the sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O God. David learned that a broken and contrite heart is well-pleasing to God. And it is a tremendous comfort to know God's concern for us. When we might be at our lowest, God not only knows the situation, but he can heal our broken heart. In Psalms 147, verse 3, it says, He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. And as we read this verse, it's fascinating to think about the next verse. God is not only involved with us personally, but he also knows the entire universe. In verse 4, it says, He counts the stars and calls them all by name. The prophet Isaiah described the ministry of Jesus Christ as binding up the brokenhearted. In Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, the Bible states, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor, and he has sent me to to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim the captives will be, released, will be released and the prisoners will be freed. Now, it is imp- important to, dis- to discern your broken heart, the reason for your broken heart. Is it from God or is it from the enemy? Have you done something that's causing you to be a broken heart that you probably shouldn't have done? 
or if there's things that happen in your life that, that's from God that had you, caused you to have a broken heart. Remember, when you go through those times, that God is with you and he is for you. And until you realize that you're broken, beyond your ability to fix it yourself, that's when you'll cry out to God to heal your broken heart. Now, Jesus came to bind up the broken heart, and he can, break, he can heal your broken heart as well. But you just have to give him all the pieces. So let's talk about those pieces just for a minute. Now, as you guys probably know, I'm, I like to illustrate things. So I got two glasses here in my hand. Well, let's just do one. All right, this glass today is going to represent your life and what you show to the world, just like I did a couple minutes ago for you. It is clean, it's desirable, and it's whole. Now, this hammer represents the troubles of this life and the storms that we all face. I'm going to show you what's going to happen when these two collide very carefully. I was a carpenter's son. I can't help myself. <laughs> yeah. That's what you got. Now, look at that glass. It is broken. In fact, it is broken into many pieces. Just like many of us today, we are broken in one form or another. When people look at our outward appearance, we look like the first glass I showed you. Put together, clean, and desirable. But on the inside, we're a mess, broken and hurting. Now, if we are being honest with ourselves, I think we'd all see that all of us are carrying a lot, around a lot of those broken pieces with us each and every day. And if we continue to carry around those broken pieces around with us every day, we're going to remain broken, just like that glass. But now here in this towel, I have a bunch of broken pieces. Now each week you might come to the altar and bring one or two of your broken pieces here. Give them to God. But let me ask you, why, have you, you ha why haven't you not given them all to God? Which one of these broken pieces did you bring with you today? So I'm going to show you something else, but I'm going to put on a glove because I don't want to cut myself. Not everybody's as manly as you, Sammy. So could you have brought a relationship with a, that is troubled with a coworker, a spouse, a family member, or even going through a divorce with you today? How about an addiction to drugs, alcohol, gambling, or sex? Have you ever been rejected by someone you love? It's caused you to be broken. Anger. Have you said or did things when you were mad that you now regret? Have you experienced the death of a loved one that has caused you to be broken? Guilt for something you did or said. How about a bad childhood, being abused, or feeling abandoned by a parent? Have you been hurt by the church or someone within it? I know I have. Do you feel like you failed at something, that you're a failure, that you just can't get it together? And lastly, are you angry with God over something he did or did not do?
Now, if yours did not make the list, that's okay. You might have had an experience much different, but it doesn't mean that you're not broken. We are all broken in one form or another. And here's the good part. When you give all those pieces to God, he can make, he can make you whole and do miraculous things. Let me show, show you is if you give all those pieces to God, what he can do for you. He can take all those pieces and just put in there. And he can make you whole. He can make you whole. He can take all those broken pieces and he can put you back together. He could take away all your pain, all your hurts, all your disappointments, and all your anger. All you have to do is trust him. And if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, he can make you whole too. All you must do is trust him and make him your Lord and Savior. And you could do that today. Today's the day. So as I close, no hour, pretty quick. The last two I've done has flew by pretty quick. But here's your choice. At the end of the day, it's this right here. It's this right here. Are you going to leave today this building like you came in, broken? Or... Are you going to leave here today whole because you gave all your broken pieces to God? That's the choice that you have today, folks. So as the band plays, as the band plays, I mean, you guys waited on me for about two, three minutes to change my clothes, so they're all right. And I didn't, I didn't speak for an hour, so. As the band plays, you know, if you got those broken pieces, I want you to bring them up here. I want you to bring them up here, and I want you to leave them at this altar. And I want you to leave here today changed. But as long as, as, long as you're not, if you give all those pieces to God, He can put you back together. But if I take this, take this glass right here, and I put water in there, and there's still one little piece missing, it's not going to be whole when it's going to leak. So if you want to feel whole, and you don't want to be, feel like you're leaking out, you don't, you still got it with you, you need to bring your pieces up here, and you need to bring them today. As man plays, I just ask that you come. Come out of sadness. Let's all come stand wherever together. you've been, come broken hearted, let this give again. And if you're broken today, if there's anything in your life that's broken, any pieces that are left unmended, bring them to the altar of God. Bring them to the altar of God right now, right now. Hallelujah. Lay down your burdens. Come on, just lay down your burdens right now. Lay down your burdens. You don't have to carry them any longer. You don't have to carry them any further. All who are broken. Come on, that's right. Come on, right now. Just come on. Come on. Of your faith. Anyone else? Come on. Oh, I'm Those of you that are watching my Facebook. Oh, right to around, whether you're, you're in your not home. Too Driving in your car, just pull us, pull off the road for a moment. Lay down and your just say, God, right, here's my broken Lay down here's your my broken heart. heart. Here's my Lay broken life. Are. Here's my broken pieces, God. Here I am. Here I am, God. Here I am. Come on right now. Come on right now. For the Come on right now. And all those who say, Bring your broken sit pieces at right the now. Table. He's the only one that can be for you. Yes. Come on. Anyone else? Anyone else? This is the 
no time. Sorrow. This is the moment. This is the hour. Come on right now. Come on right now. Lay down your
Lord, you fed. Lord, you made us whole. Oh, wonder From the crown of your head to the oh, soles of your feet. Be thou Lord, made whole. Be thou made whole. No prelude to coming to Jesus. You just come as you are. There's nothing you have to fix. There's nothing you have to do. He did it all at the cross. He did it all at Calvary. I don't have to fix nothing. He's already done it all for me. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you are thankful today that He's done it for you? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is it all right for me to share? Are we still on Facebook? Is it all right for me to share, Kathy? Cut it. See y'all. Um, <laughs>